Let's begin standing and feeling the feet and the ground underneath them. Exploring how they connect to the ground and how your weight is being transferred through them. Now, these first movements you can do either as I'm doing or whatever else comes up to you that will serve sensing and feeling your feet and the ground. Exploring the ground with your feet. How does it support you? How does the sensation travel up the rest of your body? What happens when you bend and straighten your knees? Giving more weight into the heels perhaps? Just play with it a little bit. Maybe at some point as you squat more down the arms will want to float up and let it be spontaneous natural movement for you. It doesn't have to be exactly the way I'm doing it. But let it come from the ground to be lifted up. What changes occur when you start to bounce a little bit? Can you relax the pelvis and belly? Now we're going to play with stepping forward and back. Continuously exploring the connection with the ground. How does it hold us in these different angles when we are surrendering the weight? through one foot and then through the other, playfully with an attitude of inquiry and exploration. And now we're going to come to a squat with arched spine, half squat. And here we continue to shift the weight so that we have more points of contact to focus on and to see the differences and sense how the body as a whole responds to this movement of shifting the weight side to side. Is anything happening in the neck as you move your pelvis? Touch the ground for a moment for a little deeper squat and then come up again. This will establish firmer foundation and then you can continue to play with going up and down with your torso but really work with the ground so even as you bounce or continue to bend and straighten, let it not be from the knees, but in a relationship to gravity. Releasing, relaxing your organs as you do this. And now the circular movement of the hips can begin. Again, think about the body as a whole. What are you sensing and feeling? Where does the movement start from? Does it start from the sacrum and tailbone, for instance? Or does it start from the hips? And if you're shifting the initiation point, notice the differences. And keep playing. At some point, the circles may turn into drawing of a infinity symbol or figure eight. Let your body in general take the lead. You don't have to have it figured out or planned ahead. Let your body tell you which way exactly does it want to move and you can just follow. And lengthen the left arm down your leg and stretch a little bit and then stretch the other side. 
coming back up first side again second side you may feel that stretch in the side of the lower back or in the hamstrings of the extended leg only go to the point where it's completely comfortable now shake out one leg and then the other and now to make circles with your right leg let your tailbone participate in the movement switch directions and then switch sides so the pelvis is free, the tailbone is free to move and you're lubricating the hip joint and now you're gonna pretend that you're throwing a ball with your right arm, right leg back but really try to engage the whole body in this movement so it's not just the arms circling but you can feel the right side of the rib cage, the belly, the hips, even your feet play a role here and you can have your feet off the floor or keep them on the ground at all times and switch sides if you wish, your heels can be grounded, or if you wish, you can be lifting one foot and then the other. And notice the difference between the two. And now you're going to be pretending that you are picking up fruits from a high branch of a tree. So you have to extend upwards onto your tippy toes, reaching from the waistline up, walking back and forth to challenge your balance a little bit and to be more alive on the inside. Now take a larger stance for a comfortable squat, bring your hands to the ground and straighten the legs, bending and straightening a few times with heels off the ground. If you wish to combine the breath, you can be inhaling as you go with pelvis down, exhaling as you press up. Open the legs a little wider, have, them, have the feet parallel and extend your torso, then rotate your spine a little bit left and right to get some nice pleasant extension in the side ribs. trying not to collapse in the shoulders, so keeping the shoulders, the arm bones in the shoulder sockets. Now close your legs a little bit so that you can extend your spine to the left, reach with your right hand to your left outer shin or outer ankle. Stay here and breathe. and then go to the second side. So the right hand can come to the right outer shin for support and the left hand is on the right outer ankle. Then coming back towards the front of your mat, take your front foot back, come to your knees and then lie down onto your belly. At first let the earth just receive you here and then bring the hands under the shoulders and gently lift yourself up then again invite fluidity in the spine and shoulders moving a little bit left and right and then release down extend the arms back and on the inhale, lift your arms, legs, and head up. On the exhale, bring them down. So a few times you're going to be engaging and lifting. On the inhale, exhaling, releasing. Now gently push yourself back up into downward facing dog. 
in which you can continue the movement of shifting the weight from one foot to the other, alternating bending the knees, shifting the hips. Only try to maintain the connection of the arm bone in the shoulder joint. So that should stay strong. The pelvis and legs can be fluid as you walk forward. And in this forwardly folded position, with your knee slightly bent, you can start to bounce again, gently, exploring what does this movement do to your sense of gravity, to your organs, to your neck. And then slowly find your way all the way up to standing. And notice if there's anything different in the way you stand now. And now you're going to be swaying your right leg up forward and back behind you. But bring your attention to the tailbone as you go up and back. And also notice how does it feel in the left leg, in the supporting leg. So as you sway your left leg up and down, Attention is on the tailbone doing the movement and on the right leg keeping the ground. Continuing in a similar fashion now, you're going to bend the left knee as the right leg goes back and extend yourself forward with torso and back with the leg. So first it goes up and then the torso goes forward, the leg goes back. Again, the key here is going to be you feeling your left leg grounded. And this groundedness comes from some higher center in your body, maybe your belly or even the inside of your rib cage. And at some point stay here, lift the arms up, right leg is in the air, and then release it down. And when the arms want to come down, release them. And then you're ready for the second side. So more important than the pose itself is this play of movement while something holds the stability in your body. And then the expression can be freer. So maybe for your body it will be something different at this point. And also notice how the two sides often feel very different. And then to complete the left leg comes up, arms overhead or to the sides, wherever you feel that you have more stability and sense of body wholeness. And finally, release the leg and let the arms follow. This is a good time to bring your arms up into a deep inhale and then on the exhale to bring all this experience into your heart. pause and reflect on sensations on the inside. Take a wide stance again. Again, feel your relationship to gravity. Make your foundation firmly established. As you stretch the left side, the left heel is going to stay rooted. And then go come up. You're going to root the right heel as the right arm goes over your head. So it will feel like from that rootedness the arm rises. It is not just the arm lifted, but it lifts as a rebound from the groundedness. Now in the center, notice how the weight goes down to lift the arms up. And you can explore that rootedness 
as you straighten the knees and release the arms. So again, the same thing, it's, some, it's like something is pulling you downwards and the arms float up and then you can have your torso and arms free to go to one side and then to the other because that anchor remains. And you can now slowly come back to the center. As you inhale, rise and lift your arms over your head, gaze up. As you exhale, bring it all back into the heart center and stay here for some breath, softening and relaxing your heart. Now we're going to come to a wide-legged stance for some lateral standing postures. But please take the time to explore both the width, the comfortable width of your feet, as well as their angle. Because for every person their hip joints are a little bit different. So you need to find what is a comfortable stance for you. And you can be moving, shifting weight from one foot to the other moving also the feet or bouncing so that you can experience where you are more stable. And then you're going to extend the right side of your body and then the left. So it's a little bit like Parsva Konasana and Reverse Warrior, but even the back knee is a little bit bent so that you can keep the connection between your right sitting bone and the right heel stronger. So flowing from one side to the other with full comfort and stability from the sitting bones to the heels down into the ground. And moving on to the second side, again, take some moments to experience your body, what angle, what position of the legs feels really comfortable for your hips. There is a stability and mobility at the same time, without any tension whatsoever. Then once you find it, you can open your arms to the sides and start to play with the torso. So feel the movement coming from the spine to each direction. And how the arms and the head move through space. And then finally come back up to center, straighten your legs by pressing the ground and then turn forward towards the front part of the mat and come into something like a lunge position with the back knee bent. Again exploring how you're giving your weight, how you are surrendering it into the ground, into the core of the earth and whatever arm movement arises out of that grounding you do that. Now you can slowly go for a straighter front leg, right heel to the ground. You can shorten the stance if needed. Then when you're ready, fold over your front leg. The left knee can stay a little bit bent or as much as you need to in order not to feel too much of a pull in the hamstrings. But do feel that elongation from heel to sitting bone and then up your back all the way towards the back of your head. slowly bend your left knee coming into a lunge position then bring the right knee to the ground and pause here for a few moments breathing and press yourself back towards the previous position and then step forward both knees bent, elbows on the thighs. 
Again, rooting to rise up and coming back to your heart center. Take your left leg back and first explore the connection with the ground and the connection through your different joints, ankles, knees, hips and let the arm do whatever comes best and most naturally for you. How does it feel in your chest, in your ribs, when you lift the arms up? How does it feel when you bring the arms down? When you make circles with the arms? And then for Parsvottanasana, the left heel needs to come as close to the ground as possible. Fold forward and connect to your sensations in the backs of your legs, in the back, even in the back of the neck. Release the head. Notice how it feels to let go of the tension in the neck. And then bend the right knee and come into lunge with left knee on the floor. Spend a few moments here again feeling the sensations in the front of the left thigh and when you're ready push yourself back and then step forward Grab a hold of your elbows and sway gently left and right, feeling your body as a whole in this movement. What do the legs do? What's happening in the torso? How does the neck feel here? What about your jaws, your eyes? And again, be heavy and rooted to rise all the way up to the sky and come back to your heart. So now we're going to take a wide stance again. Find a comfortable distance. Slide your left hand towards your left ankle. Pause here. Slide it back up, go with your right hand towards your right ankle. And come back up. And spend some breaths in the goddess pose. Notice the breath here. And then straighten the legs, release the arms. Now we're going to spend some time preparing for a balancing pose of half moon Ardha Chandrasana. So first experience how it is to stand on one leg, sway back and forth from higher up, from lower down. When you're ready bring your left hand to participate and feel your body as a whole as you're shifting weight here. And then at some point the right leg might want to stay up. And then bring it down again. So do this as many times as you wish to explore gravity and your relationship to it. And then at some point, if you feel like staying up, opening the chest and lifting the left arm, the right arm, do so. You can also bring the arm over your head as a next step and reach it down towards the ground. Then bring the hand down and come out of the posture. Rooted legs, lift the arms up, make a big circle, and then switch sides. So again, this place, this moment of preparation is very valuable because the end pose is not the goal. 
but you're trying to have maximum awareness into how the body weight shifts and how the ground receives you and then you will feel that at that one point you are ready for keeping the leg up and maybe even rotating the spine but up until that point you just keep playing with going back and forth and sometimes this end point will not happen so you will be happy just exploring the previous steps. Step down and come back to the center of your mat. preparing for tree pose. So here I would like to invite you to bring your attention to somewhere in the center of your body like your diaphragm and to feel as if you are rooting down from the diaphragm towards the middle of your pelvis towards the perineum and then down into the heel and then balancing is going to be much easier and as far as the arms are concerned, you can do any mudra or any hold that you like. And you can also explore not being still in the tree pose, but swaying with your arms to whichever direction your exploration attitude calls you. So moving on to the second side, think of your body as 360 degree space and have that awareness of your body as a whole, three dimensional space in the space around you that holds you and supports you while you are taking a particular form or shape, which also in itself is an ever changing one the movement inside you is never stopping and even the stillness that you cause is by holding a pose is still allowing these micro movements and maybe they want to be expressed in the larger movement of torso and arms so allow that to happen if this is your case and sometimes you will also lose the balance and then it's all about how does the ground receive you when you fall and how does that fall inform your next attempt to stay in the pose does the breath have any participation in that experience And when you've had enough of playing with your balance, you can release the left leg down and explore what is the difference when you have both legs firmly on the ground. Is there lightness? Is there ease? Or is there any other sensation that you can detect? And now release your hands and come to the pose of rest, child's pose or balasana, with knees on the ground, feet relaxed, Nestle your hips down towards your legs and relax your spine, breath. Let the head and elbows be on the ground. Really surrender yourself here. And slowly come on up to all fours and extend the right leg back with your foot flexed. 
Then reach with your right heel towards the ground to stretch the back of the calf. And repeat on the second side. And from here you're going to lie down on your right side, your head supported by your hand, your bottom knee bent, and bring the upper knee towards your, up, towards your armpit, and grab a hold of the outer side of the foot. Now you're going to extend the leg, but don't go for a fully straight knee, just to the point where you're still comfortable, and bring the heel back towards the sitting bone a few times. So it's important that you are in your own body and feeling where is the stretch good enough for me. It should never be painful. You can do this faster or slower. Then grab a hold of the top of your foot and reach with your knee back behind you. So now you are elongating the front of the leg and the hip flexors going forward and back. and move from your back to the other side. So same thing, bottom leg is going to help you keep the balance, head supported, hold the outer side of the foot while the elbow is on the inside of the knee. And then be very present to the sensations in your hamstrings and their attachments to the sitting bones so that you can know how far to go and when to back off from the stretch. Then reach back, find the top of the foot and start moving the knee back and forth experiencing the, the length and the stretch in the quadriceps and iliopsoas muscle. And try to be very clear with yourself how much you are stretching and when does the stretch become a pull. It should always be pleasant, always comfortable. Now release the foot and roll to your back. And now open your arms to the sides and feel all the points of contact on the ground. And bring your attention to the tailbone and begin to gently rotate the tailbone to the right, feeling the effect on the spine and on the legs. And then going back to the center, starting the movement with the tailbone. But feel how the movement is traveling in other places, in other parts of your body, you can even feel the effect of the movement in the neck, increasing your sensitivity and awareness of the body as a whole. Next time you come back to the center, do any adjustment as needed and then lift the legs up so that your shins are pretty much parallel with the ground and the thighs vertical. Then again, feel the groundedness in the upper body and how the weight of the thighs sits in your hip joints. Also explore what's happening in the belly. Can a little bit of engagement be softer? and more relaxed. And to keep that softness, when you lift your head and arms, feel the points of contact with the ground. How you are literally 
surrendering your weight into the ground while lifting arms, head and knees towards each other. In this way the movement is going to be softer, uh, less effortful, more graceful. The next time you bring your torso down, bring also the feet to the ground and extend the knees a little bit more forward and join them. You're going to stay in this relaxing position for the legs and hips and explore the movement of the head and neck. So as you slowly move your head from side to side, feel the bones of your skull, how they touch the ground what happens when you roll, what sensations awaken, is one side different than the other. You can do this movement as slow as you wish. And then bring your knees up to the chest, hold your knees with your hands, and now you are massaging the sacrum. So if you wanted to have different points of your sacrum touch the ground, what would the movement in the legs be like? That's what we're exploring here. And if you feel that you don't need your hands anymore and you want to play only with the legs and pelvis to do that, it can be a pattern, it can be a random movement, whatever feels right for you. As long as you are staying present inside your body, you are in the practice of yoga. Now here we're going to prepare for the next pose. So we're going to start on the ground, lifting the pelvis up and down. But more importantly, feel how you are grounding through the heels, shoulders, back of the head. How is it to have some parts of the body energetically draw downwards in order for other parts to become lighter. And then bring your knees up to roll up into seated. And take a few moments here. Now you're going to take your hands behind you to do a similar exploration as the previous. So again, through your hands and your feet, Give your weight to become light in the spine and pelvis. Explore what is it that holds you in this pose. And when you're ready, slowly come down and go back to your back. You can cross your ankles this time and hold your feet to become really heavy in the organs, in the belly, in the spine. You may be moving a little bit left and right, rocking yourself to relaxation. And when you're ready, release the feet down and slowly come and roll to your belly for some back bends and back strengtheners. As you extend your legs and arms long, try to feel that they are still very much connected to your spine. And then when you are ready, Right arm and left leg go up and down. You may be inhaling as they lift up, left arm, right leg, exhaling as they release down. All the time connected to the spine so that this is an integrated whole body movement. And then relax the head, relax the whole body. Feel the gravity help you release the tension in the muscles and organs. Feel how you're breathing together with the earth. And now coming into a cobra pose, hands under the shoulders, 
extend your feet back, stay rooted with your legs, long spine, and then lift the chest up for a few breaths. And then release and come back to all fours. Extend your arms further forward, stretch your hips back, keep your shoulders from descending. So maintain the connection from the wrists into the rib cage and enjoy the stretch. And then come back down to breathing with the earth. How does it feel to fully surrender to the nurturing power of the earth beneath you? To continue your relaxation, you may want to stay on your belly, otherwise come to your back. And here we're going to spend about five minutes letting go of any remaining tension and tightness that might be anywhere in your body-mind. Make yourself as comfortable as possible. Begin to feel the body relax. Starting from the feet, ankles, shins, knees, thighs, pelvis, abdomen, lower back, chest, upper back, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, neck, back of the head, top of the head, forehead, face, mouth, inside of the head, inside of the throat, inside of the chest, inside of the belly, inside of the pelvis. Feel your whole inner body release, relax, and let go. As the body relaxes, be aware of the self, being aware of the body. Can that self also be observed? Let there be no effort completely effortless observation witnessing a kind type of attention with no goal and no judgments 
no ambitions. Just simple, pure being. You may choose to stay in this resting position longer or if this is the end of your practice take your time to come out of the relaxation observing that slow energizing of the body again that slow transition to active state of mind and to also become conscious of any changes, any differences that you might be feeling now comparing to before your practice. And then enjoy the rest of your day. Namaste.